Prague Czech Republic is well known for its extensive public transport system, dating all the way back to 1829 when the first omnibus lines were set up. In this video, we'll explore the history and future of this storied public transit system that keeps Prague moving every single day. The omnibus is a horse-drawn trackless vehicle and the predecessor to buses and trams. They were heavily used in North American and European cities in the 19th century, including the subject of today's video, Prague. The first omnibus lines were set up in 1829 by Jakub Chocensky. Omnibus operations continued growing and in the 1860s there were multiple companies operating omnibus services. In 1875, Prague started riding the rails. On the 23rd of September 1875, the first horse-drawn tram line was put into operation. The line led from Schaudeba to the chain bridge, now known as Legion Bridge. The operator was, excuse my terrible German pronunciation, the General Direction der Prager Tramway Company. 1891 saw the first funicular line in Prague. On the 31st of May 1891, the funicular line to Letna entered service. Later that year, a funicular line to Petrin started operation. The line to Letna operated until the 16th of August 1916. In 1926, the remnants of the line were turned into an escalator, which functioned until 1935. In 1891, Prague Public Transport entered the electric era. Meet František Křižík. This beautiful gentleman was a Czech electrical engineer and inventor. He was fascinated by electricity and built upon many technologies. For this video, the most important technology he built upon is the electric tram. On the 18th of July 1891, the first electric tram was put into service. It ran on Letna, the whole line was only 800 meters long and the average speed was 10 km per hour. This tram line was extended to Stromovka in 1893. This line operated until the 15th of August 1900. But this wasn't Mr. Křižík's only project. In 1896, the electric Praha Liben Vysočany track company started operating electric trams between Prague and the then independent towns of Liben and Vysočany. The most visible remnant of Křižík's legacy is the Křižíkova metro station, located on the B line. František Křižík wasn't the only tram operator in the city. Other people and even municipal governments were opening up tram companies as well. Matí Hlaváček started the Electric Smíchov Košíře track company, which operated a tram line between Smíchov and Košíře. The then separate town of Královské Vinohrady started up their own tram company, called the Municipal Electric Track of Královské Vinohrady. Developments continued and in 1907 the trams adopted the now ubiquitous numbering system. In the same year, the last private tram line was bought by the electrical companies of the royal capital city of Prague, which finally brought the entire tram network under municipal control. On the 7th of March 1908, the first bus line was established, leading from Malostranské square to Pohořelec. This line didn't last too long though, and on the 17th of November 1909, the line was cancelled due to technical difficulties with the vehicles. However, this wasn't the end of buses in Prague, and on the 20th of June 1925, buses were reintroduced into the city. On the 5th of June 1932, the funicular to Petrin was modernized and electrified. In 1936, a new method of transport was added into the system. On the 29th of August 1936, the first trolleybus line in Prague entered service. After the full occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1939, traffic was switched from the left side of the road to the right, which required changes to the tram and trolleybus lines. The war also brought all-night service, which was launched on the 30th of November 1942. After the liberation of Czechoslovakia in 1945, the transit system went through a few changes. After the war, development of the city's public transit system continued. In 1946, the public transport was operated by only one company, the capital city of Prague Public Transit Company. New Tatra T1 trams were put into service in 1952, massively overhauling the appearance of the trams. In 1961, tram conductors started getting phased out in favor of automatic ticketing systems. 
On the 21st of November 1962, the iconic Tatra T3 tram model entered service. The T3 is the most produced tram model in the world, used by cities all over the world, including places like Pyongyang, North Korea. Modernized versions of the T3 are the most popular tram model in Prague to this day. In 1965, the HM11 line of buses entered service. A total of 2,241 HM11 buses were delivered to the capital city of Prague Public Transport Company. In the same year, trolleybus lines started getting phased out in favor of motor buses. In June 1965, a massive landslide put the Petrin funicular out of service. In 1967, the Prague Metro started construction. While the metro construction was taking place, the final trolleybus line was phased out in 1972. On the 9th of May 1974, the C metro line was finally put into operation. It led from Kacherov to Sokolovska, now known as Florence. On the 12th of August 1978, the A metro line entered service, leading from Náměstí Míru to Leninova, now known as Davidska. After a 20-year pause, the Petrin funicular re-entered service on the 15th of June 1985. In the same year, on the 2nd of November, the B metro line started operation. It led from Smíchov train station to Sokolovska, now known as Florence. On the 1st of July 1986, a new tram model entered service, the Tatra KT-8D5. In November 1989, the communist government fell and a new democratic government took power. In 1994, the first low-floor bus, the Neoplan N4014-3, entered service. This paved the way for wheelchair-accessible vehicle adoption. The next low-floor vehicle entering service was the RT6N1 tram. This tram wasn't very popular, and operation ended after only two years. The Czech Republic suffered from massive floods in 2002, and the public transport took a massive hit. The last public transit station was reopened almost a year after the flooding, on the 22nd of March 2003. On the 28th of November 2003, the tram line in Hlubočevi was extended to Sídliště Barandov. Low floor trams reappeared in 2006 when the Škoda 14T tram model entered service. This model is in service to this day. In 2009, the SOR NB12 and NB18 bus models entered service. These are the most popular bus models running in Prague today. Less popular lines are served by the SOR BN 8.5, which entered service in 2010. The Škoda 15T tram model was also put into operation in 2010. This model, along with its variations, is the most modern and the second most widespread tram model operating in Prague today. The small Solaris Urbino 8.9 LE bus entered service in 2012, serving less popular lines. The newest extension of the metro network started operations on the 6th of April 2015, extending the A-line from Davidska to Moto Hospital. Trolley buses made their return on the 15th of October 2017 with the construction of a test track in Prosecka Street. In 2022, construction started on the D-metro line. The expected year of completion is 2029. In the same year, a new tram extension started construction, extending tram service from Divoká Šárka to Jedina. In 2023, segments of a new train line to the airport began construction, allowing for a fast public transport connection to the airport. I believe that the future looks bright for public transport in Prague. The D metro line is under construction, new tram extensions are being built and a new train line to the airport is also under construction. Public transportation is a vital part of the city, since 52% of trips are taken by transit. Let's hope that the city prioritizes transit development in the future and makes this beautiful city a little more livable. This has been Tramly, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.